Healing is a better word than curing. Curing means bringing him back to original state which is impossible in this universe. Healing is making him whole. You can heal a dying patient also and make him feel happy. When once he is happy, he dies. And as Sanatana Dharma said, the soul does not die. A latest study in Illinois showed that dead patient's consciousness is still alive for as long as they are in the hospital. Beyond that, they have not studied. And as long as the patient was in the dead body, was in the hospital, the consciousness was alive. How many have read that book, Life After Death? Uh, Raymond Moody Jr. Of course, you can always criticize that it's not done. No, it is all done properly. And all that showed was when you have a heart stopping and brain dead, when the brain doesn't get blood supply, you still can see your consciousness telling you. One nurse told this patient, they were giving him pumping and all. She came and said, hey, leave him alone here. He's dead. And she went. She was the main nurse in the theater. No? This patient had never seen that lady before. Okay? Anyway, he recovered. And he was in the intensive care unit, recovering very well. And this nurse is being the matron. She goes there and says, hi, how are you? Then she said, you are the lady who said this ass is dead. I'm here, alive. She, was, she collapsed. She collapsed. So you have your consciousness. There's the energy in and around you, which is the halo around you. And this energy is what heals. And this energy, why don't you use it to heal others? You spread this message. Quantum healing is very simple. I'll tell you, quantum healing is you create your own thoughts and these are quantum thoughts. And the thoughts heal you. Because if you know, if you go a little deep into quantum physics, the Planck's quotient says, every second, every second, your matter and energy change 1044 times, which is called the Planck's constant. And just as every atom knows the blueprint of a molecule, every energy knows the blueprint of a matter. So supposing, let us say, you have a problem with your liver, let us say, you have a cancer in the liver. You just meditate and say, let my liver cancer go away. So when next time the energy, which is the quantum energy, changes into matter, it rebuilds your liver without the cancer. It doesn't overnight, because we all want quick fixes, you know. That's why we like Western medicine. You have a fever now, today the fever should come down. Nobody tells you fever is a good thing God has given you because you have a germ inside you. The germ to kill you requires higher temperature. On the contrary, we go and kill the fever. So instead of one day's recovery, which you would have had without the drug, you have one week's recovery and then say, oh, I'm a weakness, I can't go to the hospital and all because of drugs. So friends, it's your thought that can change. And where does the thought generate? In the mind, not in the brain. Remember that? The lady who showed that the opiate receptors outside the brain for the first time, her name is her name was, she is dead, Candace Pert in the NIH. So the NIH director who got this, because she will get Nobel Prize certainly for this. So he published that in his name. So she went to the Nobel Committee with her ledger and said, this is my work, this rascal has published that. So in the bargain, he didn't get the Nobel Prize and she also didn't get the Nobel Prize. But she has written a book for you. How you can treat yourself with the man. And the book's name is Molecules of Emotion. What's the book's name? Molecules of Emotion. And the author's name? Candace, C-A-N-D-A-C-E, Pert, P-E-R-T. And there one sentence I'll tell you in that book. The book is very good. She tells her about her problems and things like that. She says, time has come for us now not to reach to the cupboard for pills for a headache. You take a quiet place in your house. Better Guruji's... Uh, Pyramid, sit quietly for a little while and elevate your consciousness to a level where your consciousness, your mind can heal your headache. Drugless treatment. So fascinating. And a lot of people will say, oh, what is homeopathy? I can't see any chemistry in homeopathy. I test it, there's no chemistry. There can't be chemistry because it's not meant to be chemistry. Now, Rustum Roy has found out the structure of water which has got loose bands, you put any medicine, say a drop of Sambuca's nigrain into medicine, that changes the structure of medicine. And the same structure remains changed even if you dilute it one million times. And the, it's a change structure's energy that heals and not the chemical. Chemical, if you give it to the body, it destroys. Here there's no chemical, only change water. And water is alive. You know, we, we were taught in botany that water is sucked up the tree, 
uh, by capillary action. No. Water is so alive, like a snake, it can go wherever it wants to go. Water is fascinating. So the new science of evolutionary biology has clearly taught us that the human system is a closed system. E vis -a -vis, the Western science which says human system is an open system. What is the difference between the two? Simple differences. In the olden days, you wanted hot water in Bangalore or a bath, you had to take a bucket of water and put your heater inside that. When the water is hot, you have to remove the heater yourself, which means for the water to be heat or cold, you require an outside agency, a doctor, to do that. Today, we have come to a geyser. You switch on and go away. The water heats on its own, and the water is hot, the, the adapter will push it off, and when the water becomes cold, it becomes warm again. So, human system is like that. It has got an inbuilt doctor, the most qualified doctor. He is above PhD. His name is the immune system. And we have to guard our immune system very, very carefully. That is the essence of Ayurveda, which says, Swasthasya, Swastha, Rakshitam. Preserve the wellness of the healthy. And to do that, Ayurveda is elaborate systems of Panchakarma. And when your immune system is guarded, you can't get any disease, including cancer. So friends, though it is very easy to say, it is difficult to do. You have to do certain things because you must have an environment in your body which is conducive for health. Now, for example, we eat so many things. Like, you know, we are carnivores. Except eating man, of course, we eat man every day. But uh, except eating man in physical sense, we eat all animals. So this makes your body's environment acidic. Acid environment, cells cannot survive. So the cells mutate and become cancer. You just have to make it alkaline. Very simple. You can drink alkaline water. God has given you a fantastic alkaline water. That's called tender coconut water. Now today in America, every house has cartons of tender coconut water. Not Coca-Cola and uh, Pepsi and all. Tender coconut water. Tender coconut water is such a fascinating alkaline uh, liquid that if you have one day, every day a tender coconut water, cancer will find it very difficult to come in. Supposing you can't get tender coconut water, let us say you are not in the tropics. Somebody will say, I'm from Timbuktu in Canada or I'm in Quebec or somewhere. You still can do that. You get a lime piece, put it in your drinking water, pieces of lime, cut it, and then drink that water next day. Preferably, keep it in either silver, gold, or bronze, or copper vessel. I tell you, it becomes so healthy. So friends, preserving health is more profitable than treating diseases.